Hello, I'm Brenda, and this is me in the city, and we're here in Royal Oak at Stella's Boutique. We're going to talk about a couple of things that you absolutely must have for this season, and how art is fashion, or fashion is art. So why don't we come inside? I'm Brenda B, and this is B in the City, and I am in one of my favorite places in the whole wide world, Stella's Upscale Boutique in fashionable Royal Oak, Michigan. And I am here with the owner, Linda Isro. Linda, thank you for allowing us to come into your space today. And thank you for coming. How did this come about? I have been doing retail for probably about nine years and um, I was selling on the internet and then I was traveling and working at conventions and setting up a booth at conventions. And after several years of doing that, it just got very old of being on the road all the time. And I just decided to find a storefront where I wanted to set up a store, but it had to be the perfect spot. Name a moment or a customer that is the most memorable for you. The very first day that I opened, uh, I had um, so a, a couple come in with their, with their teenage daughter and a girlfriend of hers, and the kids had gotten out of school because we opened at the beginning of June, and when I told them that it was my very first day of opening, they said, we have to buy something from you because you know you're you're brand new and it's your first day here and they actually bought several things and it was just made me feel so good it made me feel so welcome like i did the right thing so this was a dress that i know i absolutely had to have when you go like me i really have to do like the five minute face um, the two minute put the dress stocking shoes on and put glam in a bag and with Stella's Boutique I was able to grab this dress really quickly and pull off a really great look. So this is, we liked the dress because we thought it was a really basic piece. Um, she put a great belt with it which is something that we do. We do a lot of belts in here because I think it really finishes off an outfit. Her necklace is good. It can be worn as a dress. She has it with, with leggings and then you know with the, with the black filling in up here. Um, it's just really, really versatile. The fabric is amazing. The color is, is very neutral, but it's, it's just, it, it grabs you, and that's something that we liked about it. We have a lot of pieces in here that are like that. We have some, some pieces that are really great bling, and then we have really neutral things like this that you can do every day. So that works for us, and it works for our customers. And it definitely works for me. better not go anywhere because up next I'm going to be trying on a few things here at Stella. We're going to talk about some tips and things that you absolutely must have for this season. We're going to engage a little bit more of what it's like to be a girl in this world. But before we get into that, I want you to check out what's hot in the city. to be fashionable and here are a few things that a woman absolutely must have in her wardrobe the 
first thing that we're going to start off with is the little black dress, your basic black dress that every woman should have in their wardrobe. We think that this one is perfect. It has great lines to it. It's very figure flattering. It's simple, but it has some nice style. It's something that you could wear to work and put a jacket over, or you could put some great jewelry with it and some great heels and wear it out for a night on the town. This is also a cute outfit. wider and just make it very very versatile we fell in love with this dress it just it, you can wear this for Christmas it's a great New Year's dress you can wear it to a wedding it's just one of those things that it's a very 60s look it has pockets Love it's got vintage. the belt yeah very vintage. Um, Love vintage. very vintage it's lined I think with either black or silver shoes and, and we have a really chunky great necklace with it another piece that you just can't go wrong with you could pull this out of your closet, you know, two years from now, and it'll still be very fashionable and make a great statement. like this but in a different color from my store that was a gift to her from one of my customers. Um, I had a customer of mine that came that went to one of Lady Gaga's concerts and waited backstage for her for her to come out and waited there for like two hours and he had the ring on and she saw the ring absolutely loved it and he gave it to her and she has worn it on you know several occasions in public and I have pictures from like People Magazine and um, Ellen she, she wore it on the Ellen show and it is, it's very, it's, it's a very interesting ring and it's very expressive and very artistic. And this piece, the Gaga ring, definitely is a great accessory to go with anything kind of monochromatic to give it that extra burst. So definitely love Gaga and love this ring. So I'm here today with one of my absolute favorite individuals and poets in the whole wide world. Rhonda Welsh. I'm so happy to have you here, Rhonda. And how do you see or have you seen the growth in Detroit poetry? Mm. Over the past few years, Detroit poetry has seemed to just explode. And um, actually, I'm relatively new to the scene. I give this impression of being a veteran. But um, in the past, I would say one to three years, there seems to be a crop of poets coming up that are doing things, going places, and really making a name for the city. So um, it's growing. So as you say, you sort of have been identified as a veteran. When did you actually get started with poetry, and when did you come to the scene? It's kind of a strange thing. Okay, technically I've been writing since I was eight years old, but I've only been in the poetry scene since around 2003, 2004. I was actually performing before I knew there was a poetry scene, and I was so excited to find out that there were all these poets around who, who were doing this thing in addition to what I was doing. I thought I was the only one, and look, lo and behold, there was a whole community. <laughs> so tell us about your latest project. My latest project is Raw Clay, and it's a CD, and it's actually poems from my book, Red Clay Legacy. It's the more intimate, personal ones from there. I actually went to Los Angeles in June and worked with um, a singer-songwriter, Kevin Sandbloom, and we actually take the poetry and fuse it with music, and so in a sense, the poems actually become songs, and so I'm really excited about it, and it's coming up very soon. And what piece will you be performing for us today? Today I'm performing my only home. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Rhonda Welsh. Detroit is my only home. 
child of the West Side, majestic Puritan Elmhurst, Linwood, Plymouth, Eight Mile, all the while craved a different existence, but finally realized Detroit is who I am. Good students tease for acting too white while the suburbs scream too black, and neighborhoods who know no lack always labeled poor. Detroit was once much more than dirty streets and corrupt politicians, and perverted superstitions make some people treat books like bad juju. But my Detroit is not that simple. Kind-hearted hustlers work day and night, make a dollar out of 15 cents, and the auto industry came and went, but true Detroiters always make it work. Saturday greens from Eastern Market and a new hat from Mr. Song. You can't go wrong on Sunday mornings, shouting and rocking until the blues melt away. Detroiters always seek a brand new day. Even our skyline boasts a renaissance. And the summer, Caribbean picnic on Belle Isle, moonlit concerts on campus marshes, and greasy fish fingers clapped to the beat with sandal-clad feet at the African World Festival. Poetry is everywhere. Music Hall, Scarab Club, 1515, Broadway, even the YMCA. Detroit is no longer in its heyday, but its days are not finished yet. There is much more life. More pride runs through the veins, and soon the activists must rise and take the reins. Restore what has been lost. No longer give thought to those who diss and dismiss. It is not a wasteland. There are families here. Educators, doctors, lawyers, butchers, bakers, yes, even candlestick makers reside in Detroit. Shake off depleted self-esteem that hangs over the city like a cloud. Shout the city's praises out loud and recognize its worth. Induce the new birth. Invoke that migrant spirit transplanted from red earth. Don't let it die in a natural death. Purge the dross and rebuild the best. Detroit is the only home I've ever known. to the hospital last night to visit a friend of mine. He's on life support. Could you please pray for him? I said I went to the hospital last night to visit a friend of mine. He's on life support. Could you please pray for him? I brought him a few things that I thought he could use. I brought him a microphone, two turntables, I went by the hospital last night to visit a friend of mine. He's on life support. Could you please pray for him? Some of you may know him. First name Hill, last name Hill. 